Okay, I'm back. Uh, it's been a little while. Been busy. You know, things happen at work. We have uh, lives outside of these videos, unfortunately, that uh, take our time. But, you know, back and I got a couple of questions. Actually, got a handful of questions over these multi-threaded videos I've been putting out. Uh, honestly, I put that out just kind of for fun. And they got such feedback that, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put another one out. And this one was the questions about the lock keyword and, you know, the new C-sharp uh, programming model and how does that affect it and, and is it thread safe and how do you guarantee thread safety, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's a big, big, big question. And so we're going to do a couple of videos here and we're going to discuss it. The first one here is, again, on SVN, source code's all out there. Um, we're going to talk about a thread safe and non-thread safe instance of a class and we're going to compare them we're going to let it run two counters and I'm going to show you what happens uh, when something's thread safe and when it's not and when we use the lock keyword and when we don't and one of the pitfalls with the lock keyword which is performance uh, we're going to show that too so basically what we've got here is we've got uh, three classes that we use the counter base which has just got two abstract functions in it, add and subtract. That's not very hard, right? We add a number, plus one, we subtract a number, minus one. Um, we've got two classes that derive from that class, a uh, counter with locks and a counter without lock. The counter with the lock has a object in it that we are going to use to actually do the lock, and we're going to lock it when we add. That'll give the thread that's accessing this a unique lock and we'll increment the count and then the same thing when we subtract we'll get a unique lock and we'll subtract uh, this one is thread safe the non-thread safe one counter without lock non-thread safe as I indicate here has just got a count where we add and subtract and then we've got a static function here test counter where we're going to pass it the counter base because both of these implement from the same base so we're going to pass it the counter base and we're going to go for uh, many thousand times through it. We're going to add one, subtract one, and in the end we should have what? Zero. Because we, this, we add the same numbers we subtract. So we should get zero. And what we're going to see is we're going to run it uh, three times just to show you that I'm not crazy. Well, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm not wrong in this case. Uh, we're going to run it three times and we're going to go through and declare three threads. We're going to start them, we're going to block them, and then we're going to time them while we're running them and show you the answer. And we're going to show you that in the non-thread safe condition, which is all of this, all of this is non-thread safe, we're going to tell you and show you that the count actually varies from one run to another because you've got uh, threads that go out there and we'll see here as we declare the threads and we do a little bit of a uh, link and we go out there and we say okay here's the counter and here's the uh, function and the value we want to send to it this is how you send a value to the uh, function in uh, declaring the thread uh, this shouldn't be magic uh, I can certainly answer questions about it but uh, this is just we're calling that test counter function passing it the uh, counter without a lock and we're going to run that, and we're going to see that it blows up and does some really bizarre things. And then we're going to do the same experiment, if you will. Again, reinitializing things, only this time we're using the object of counter with our lock, with the uh, object we lock in it, our sync lock object. And we're going to go in there, we're going to run it, and we're going to have a nice zero at the end of it. Now it's worth noting here, uh, what do we expect before we run it? What are our expectations? The first one is that up here in the non-thread safe code, because we're not blocking and we, because we're not locking, I should say, it's going to be faster. It's actually going to perform better. Okay, and that's a bad way to put it. It's going to perform faster. <laughs> better is wrong because the answer is going to be wrong. Now sometimes it's going to get lucky and get it right doesn't mean it can never get it right but it's not going to consistently get it right uh, so we're going to see it run faster up here than we see it run down here and we'll get into a whole bunch of where's what's and why's later 
Uh, I want to get this video out tonight, um, get it all compiled for you and up on the YouTube site tonight, just so you can play with the code. Uh, there'll be instructions how to get the code. Everything's the same uh, as before, but you can go in here and tinker with it and, and do things you want to do. Be really careful <laughs> because threading can do some crazy things. Um, but it is fun. Threading's a lot. It's, middleware is what I love to do, obviously. And so uh, uh, this is a really good example, I think, to help get you started in threading uh, and the lock keyword. There's some other things with synchronization we'll go over in the next one. Um, but this one for the time being is the lock. So let's run it and let's see what happens. Well, let's see what we got. This is not a thread safe counter. The total count after the unsafe calls is 199, 191, and 294 milliseconds. And then the thread safe counter is zero in four milliseconds. So you can see there's a significant time difference in the amount of time it takes to execute but the payoff is that we actually get the correct answer and then we run it again and you can see we get another negative answer in a non-thread safe but again it's faster but we get zero in the correct call and zero so you can see how unpredictable the non-thread safe one is and this is what's so dangerous about parallel programming is that if you don't write things which are thread safe it'll compile it'll run but an angle work and so you've got to be really careful um, the horrible thing here is you can see there is a massive and it doesn't look like it but there's a massive difference in performance one to three milliseconds you know uh, we're averaging about 25 percent slower so is there a happy medium yes there is uh, the machine this is running on because that's going to come up if you have a single core a uh, single threaded machine doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do this uh, this is actually running on one of the most modern processors out there it's got six cores in it um, 32 gig of RAM and an SSD so uh, we've got plenty of, of threads we can we can run in parallel on these things uh, so it's interesting if you have the ability to run VMware and to uh, spin up a VM and run this example in it and tinker the number of uh, cores down to one and then tinker it up to two and watch how the numbers vary. Um, I'm a geek at heart. I like to do that kind of stuff. Uh, you'll see a difference. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully uh, the source code I know will help you. Uh, go out there and play with a little bit of stuff and uh, look for the next video really soon. And we'll get into a little bit more uh, exotic ways to handle it. Uh, but this is just a really great, uh, straightforward way to show you a thread safe and non thread safe instance of the same base. Uh, just the difference being that we're using locking to do it. Uh, locking is not necessarily the best way, the greatest way, the only way to handle thread safety. Um, people who do multi threading all the time, I are geniuses obviously they uh, they do some crazy things and uh, we'll, we'll look at some other ways we can do things to, to get a little better performance but if you're writing code for business this will work just fine this is a good way to do it so thanks for stopping by thanks for your time thanks for your attention and we'll see you next time